yeah, welcome to Three Skulls Tavern. I'm Matt, the host of the of the channel. Um, without all my shaggy hair, I've got this little stupid um, top knot thingy now. Um, I don't know. I mentioned that. <laughs> it's, so, so self deprecating I know. Um, <laughs> also, Simon. We appear to have lost Simon. Uh, Simon's video. No, he's back. Okay, no, cool. He's here. Um, I'm, I'm here. We are starting a new actual play today with the cast you can see um, arrayed before you, and we are basically, um, yeah, as you've seen coming here, uh, we're playing Vazen or Vasen, I think, as it's technically pronounced. Um, Actually, Simon is our native. Yeah, um, I mean, Scandinavian. I'll, I'll look at Simon whenever we mispronounce. <laughs> if if you yeah. want to go into it, it's Vaisen. But Vaisen. Vaisen. I mean, uh, I'm gonna stick with Vaisen then because it's close enough, and it's it's my yeah. kind of Germanic tongue that's that's easier for me to remember. Yeah, Vaisen is fine. Okay. Vaisen. Um. Anyway, it's a game of um Nordic horror is one of the ways it's been described. It's set in a mythic um scandinavia around the end of the 19th century um eric's gonna do a full um i guess a full blurb about the setting so I'll let him do the rest ah. but just very excited this is the latest game from free league um in terms of like what we've got our hands on um shipping is going to be starting hopefully soon so we're actually still technically well not shipping shouldn't start until we've got the final pdf done um we're working off of a beta the beta has been in our hands for quite a while and um the final PDF is, is hopefully going to be fairly soon, and we're not expecting too many changes. So um, having read through the rules myself a number of times, I, I kind of feel pretty confident that there's I don't see many changes coming. Um, but yeah, very excited to be playing this. It's one of the more narrative of the Free League games, which is also cool. Um, it kind of marries the, the very narrative rules light um, system in Tales from the Loop with um, some of the more crunchy combat systems that you can find in like Coriolis, Mutant Year Zero, Forbidden Lands, etc., um, an alien. So it kind of, um, it kind of bridges the two. It's it, which I think is quite cool. It's got a, it's got a really good mix of, um, yeah, of mechanics. And, um, as with our forbidden lands, actual play, this is, we're going to be, we're going to be doing a normal role-playing session. Um, everybody here I've actually role-played with in the past. So, um, I've kind of picked these people because I've, I've known, um, I've played with them and I know them to be good role players. Um, however, we're also not going to be focusing too much on the, um, on like acting, we're going to be focusing, like in our Forbidden Lands game, also on um, explaining the rules as they come up, so that viewer, you, the viewers, can also kind of um, learn the game as we go along. Um, that's a big, big part of this channel is is doing that. So we're going to continue that trend here in, um, yeah, with Phazen. <laughs> um, so that's my little blurb done. Um, I'll turn over to. So the, first of all, thanks to everyone here. We'll we'll do introductions when we go through our characters. I think. Um, I guess just to get straight into it. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, quick, I guess quickly talk about format before I turn over. Sorry. Um, this is going to be a campaign and like Forbidden Lands is going to be once a month. So we're going to try and squeeze it in between Forbidden Lands games. So hopefully roughly every two weeks, there will be a, an, a, 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 camp, a campaign game going. Um, it's going to be the same format. It's going to be a two hour show. So more or less. So we don't really want to go over that, so it's going to be fairly easy to digest bites. Um, and it will be saved on Twitch afterwards, and it will also all of these episodes will also be uploaded to YouTube and our Anchor podcast. So if you want to listen to it, um, if you've missed it and you want to listen to it audio, you know, just over audio, there will be that option as well. Done. Over to you, Eric. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so we are... Uh, yeah, so I, Matt started talking about the setting. Um, uh, also, about learning. Uh, we're still learning as well. I've never run this game before, and I'm doing it live, so that's <laughs> awesome. Um, and we're going to work it through it all together. Um, I've run through it a few times. I kind of like Matt says I'm a pretty big fan of like what the rules look like, so I'm pretty excited to dive into it. Um, and uh, yeah, so the, the sort of setting, you have options. Um, for, for running a, a Boston campaign or a, a Boston um, mystery and sort of how you want to, to set it, like sort of what, what boxes you want to tick and how much of the horror do you want to lean into, how much of the suspense do you want to lean, in, lean into, how much of the mystery do you want to lean into. And, and I think these games, at least to begin with, are, are going to be leaning more toward the mystery side, finding out what's going on. Um, 
some of like the more horror elements that you might expect of other games like uh, body horror and helplessness um, might not be quite so much. Definitely, got, it's going to be low on gore and, and things like this. This isn't going to be a slasher, um, though people will probably be horribly maimed here and there. <laughs> um, and uh, there are some topics we're going to sort of shy away from that, you know, kind of come with the setting. Um, but hopefully still we'll, we'll sort of maintain a, a sense of an ease. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll see what, where we go with it. Um, the setting itself, um, as, as Matt was saying, is the mythic north in, in the 19th century. And this is an alternate history setting. Um, in fact, it's, it's encouraged that you really don't go too much into detail on setting details that you don't need, right? So we're not having a starting year. I have the idea that, that the world we're playing in, you can broadly look to like the 1840s to 1860s to sort of get a gauge for what sort of technology is common. But if I feel for the story or for a mystery I'm going to write that I want to change that around a little bit, I'm going to flip around a little bit, right? Um, real world politics. Um, some things are going to be very similar to historically, um, and some things might be a little bit different. Um, uh, Simon and I talked um, pretty recently about like maybe how we wanted to handle Russia and Finland during the time of, of so things like that. Um, don't expect the real world, but don't be surprised to see bits and pieces of it here and there. Um, yeah, I think that that describes it. The, I, I, the biggest themes, um, and, and this I'll probably write into my mysteries quite a lot, um, are have to do with change, right? This is uh, the 19th century. The world is changing very rapidly. Industrialization is happening. Uh, the old ways are sort of being left behind um, in favor of empiricism and technology and industrialization mechanism, right? It's a very rich um, era to, to deal with, so it's, it's very exciting for me. Um, so they're, like, that's going to feature heavily um, in my game as well as I think it's, it's implied to, to do so in the, in the material that we get in the setting. Um, I think that's as much as I want to say about setting right now. Um, okay, uh, so there are a number of ways to start your, your Vassen campaign, um, depending upon like how the, the characters have met, um, what their sort of backstories are and things like this. Uh, how we're starting, the givens of our campaign, is that our players have all already met by the time we're going to be starting today. Um, they have all, for their own reasons, sought out uh, the Society, um, which is uh, an organization, historic organization in this world that um, hold, hold up a second. investigated. Sorry. Yes. Sorry, we lost video from all of you. <laughs> oh. All of us. Uh, yep, one second. One second. <clears throat> hey, okay, we're back. Okay. Right, apologies. Uh, um, <laughs> I'm not sure where this cut off. Um, just the video. I think the audio is still coming through. Apologies. Okay, excellent. Okay, wonderful. Um, <laughs> I completely lost my train. We have derailed. Um, <laughs> Danger! <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> so the givens of the campaign, um, all our players have met each other. Uh, they have met um, the, the last surviving that they know of member of the Uppsala branch of the society. Uh, named Linnea um, Elphiklin. Um, she gave them some very vague ideas about the history of the society. Um, it's understood that she was sort of part of it in its last incarnation, but she mostly resides in the asylum now um, in Uppsala. Uh, the most important thing she gave you was sort of the keys to the, the castle of the society used as a headquarters. That's yours now. Um, and uh, it's dilapidated broken down. I imagine when you first went in, you're like, what? Why are we here? Um, there's a library intact. And a couple days after that, um, a, a man showed up named Algot Frisk. And he told you all that his family had been serving in this castle for, for generations now. And he felt it was his duty to sort of carry on the family tradition. So you have yourselves the four of you 
in this castle and you're trying to work out this is this is the biggest clue you have to understanding um the site which is this sort of supernatural ability that you all have to see things that are normally unseen and it, trying to understand more about that site for all your own motivations and personal ways has led you to this point to being in this strange castle probably for some of you far from where you came from um for others <clears throat> maybe not so far from where you're you're residing um and so i think at this point like we'll we'll go through and we'll talk to our cast of characters we'll describe our, our motivation um uh and so yeah let's start with um uh, Tony and Amadeo. So Amadeo is a surgeon, right? And he's been working in Uppsala. So it wasn't a big trip for him. What else do you want to tell us about Amadeo? So, well, the full name would be Amadeo Sanchez de Ocaña. So he's a, he's originally from Spain, uh, actually from Madrid. He came uh, to Uppsala for his own reasons, so at least that's what he has said to to the others, because he was interested probably to, to study in this well-recognized university in Uppsala. And he has resided the, here for the latest, I don't know how many years, but enough that he already got his diploma. I mean, he's a doctor now, a full doctor in the, in the hospital here, and he's uh, as far uh, as he's aware, pretty well known. People recognize him as a, as a very good surgeon who can do amazing things with his hands. But he's also well known for his crazy parties in, in Uppsala. So he basically knows most of the bars and uh, hidden places to, to, to have fun. Whatever that means in the 1800s. <laughs> I mean, I'm guessing it's not disco music, but <laughs> no, probably not. <laughs> in any case, he's well known in both kind of the more serious intellectual uh, spheres of society, but also in a way in the I would say in the underground society and kind of the people that go out at night and and things like this. And I think that could be all of it for now. And so, um, do you Benito think that... Hmm. Go. Sorry, go ahead. I don't know if you want me to talk about my advantages at bringing a profession. I more or less talk, talk about it, but I don't know if you you want me to say more about Only it. Only if you want to say more. I don't think there's anything else um, that we need, but okay. if you want to... Sounds good. I, I think the only question I have for you is, since Amadeo has sort of been professionally working here, mm -hmm. um, he probably has his own residence in the city separate from the castle. Um, do you think in the last couple of days he's mostly been in the castle with the others or sort of i mean he has his private practice right so i imagine he's maybe stepping in what do you think i could say he's i mean he's an open person very social so i think he met these new people with these new abilities or this new and he's probably quite curious and knowing that he when whenever he's committing to something he commits a hundred percent i would mm -hmm. say he probably is working whatever time he needs to work and then right away coming back to the to the castle either to read the library because you said it's mostly intact and yeah. him being an intellectual probably he wants to know what is the society yeah, yeah. so awesome. that would be my guess cool um matt how's about sven okay um i'm gonna be playing sven hellstrom who is um from sweden and Sven is from a, an aristocratic background originally, but something happened in um, his past, in his childhood, and his family fortunes got... Um, haven't quite decided yet on whether they have been... Um, whether they were taken away, like maybe by the government or the, the powers that be, um, or whether they were somehow lost, like lost at sea. I like with that, something like lost at sea. Um okay. And in the process, he's basically become a ruin. He's become a ruined aristocrat with not really much money to his name. Um, he always liked dabbling in um, the occult, and was very, always interested in using his hands to perform little feats of, um, you know, magic, magic tricks. And so he's basically um, once once the money for that like was due to his due to his family as he sees it was gone. Um, he turned to what he was like, what he was good at. He didn't really have a trade, but.
but he did he was always playing around with magic tricks and stuff and he basically became um a magician like a parlor magician um but also still interested in the occult and yeah that's pretty much where we have him now he's um 37 years old so he's he's not a young not a young chap anymore um and his main motivation is power he really wants um he really wants to regain some of that that tasty that tasty wealth <laughs> that that he's that he um that he feels is is his right and was lost so yeah this is going to be a bit different for me as a player because i don't normally play um privileged characters i like playing kind of rogues and things um guts are trash basically so this would be a good little change i think a nice little way to flex my my muscles my role yeah. muscles and um, he's not he's not privileged right now he's not privileged right oh. now but he wants to be so he sees himself yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm trying i'm going to be trying to play him in a really arrogant way i'm going to be trying to play him in a way that doesn't really especially if we're going to be out like in villages and stuff with the with the oh, rabble yeah. um he's going to be He's going to be throwing monkey wrenches, you know, left, right, and center with uh, in social situations. Um, that's, that's awesome. So, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, uh, yeah. Rodders, tell us about Selma. All right. I'm going to be playing uh, Selma. She's a 24-year-old young upstart uh, journalist. Uh, she basically uh, wrote a quite a controversial piece on, uh, on uh, I think it was, a, we, we agreed it was a labor issue, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, that got her some, you know, a burst of fame and money, and she's been, uh, you know, riding that wave for a while. And yeah, she's definitely interested in finding uh, something, a really good piece of news to write about the Vasin. She's looking for that perfect story. Uh, what else can I say? Oh, physical description. She's got uh, blue eyes, black hair tied in a ponytail. Wears practical dresses, uh, bright colors, let's say green, blue, and uh, high boots, definitely high boots. Mm -hmm. Like practical boots, not for yeah, like walking right. in the countryside for hunting spirits, mostly. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right. Um, and finally, uh, Simon, tell us about Yalmar. Yeah, Yalma is a private detective, and unlike the other Swedish characters, he's Fenno Swedish which means that he's from Finland. Just like me, by the way. But <laughs> <laughs> I, I, just, I, I just had to throw, throw in some representation. It's not that common, though. <laughs> but yes, and uh, he is 42, quite old, looks older than he is, uh, because uh, as all of you probably know, because he's probably, I don't know if he's told you, but it's quite clear that he's been sickly for most of his life. Uh, and... Eric and I talked about this, and, and he, ha he survived consumption uh, as a pretty young person uh, and I've uh, I have an idea for that which is that I will change my uh, trauma to him being saved by a Vesen. So, Sam Vesen took mercy on him as a child and uh, saved him from consumption and he's been very curious about that uh, every <laughs> since then but basically Yalma is a private detective he has been working in in Helsinki in Finland for most of his working life uh, until something happened, which he has not told you all that much about. Uh, and he had to relocate to Stockholm uh, at first and uh, work the beat there and started drinking a little bit too much, as you may have noticed. <laughs> uh, and then he relocated to Uppsala after uh, word of whatever happened in Helsinki uh, came to Stockholm. So now he's working in, in Uppsala and has been working there for a few years, I'd say. Not not very long. He's not as established as our Spanish doctor, <laughs> for instance. Um, um, yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, that's more or less it. Uh, I, 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 yes, I'll, he's uh, rather short and uh, he's not short and stout. He's short and like short and gaunt. He, okay. he does not look like a powerful fellow, this one. Uh, yeah. But he is quite clever, so it helps. Yeah, definitely. Um, I was going to ask, I, I can't remember, I don't think we built in our relationship, did we? No, we didn't. Okay, that's something we'll, we'll start working on. We're working on, on first impressions right now. And you've only known each other for a few days, so I think maybe after this, this mystery, we'll get into that. Excellent. Um, so, um, 
Yeah, let's just um, hop right in. So uh, you're here, you're at the castle. It's probably mid-morning. Um, it's been hot, incredibly hot. Uh, the castle itself, the inside, uh, you've had to chase out rats to get any sort of purchase, like just in the sort of main foyer, um, not to mention the library, which sounds like, like Amadeus has been fighting a battle in there for, for some time against uh, all sorts of vermin and, and cobwebs. Um, to get really an eye on anything. Um, and it's hot, it's incredibly hot and stuffy in here. Um, and so it's, as I said, it's the mid morning um, when you all hear out at the front, you hear like a loud rapping on on the sort of front door, just like a boom, 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 boom. And um, moments later, as though he were right there at the door. You can hear the door open. You can hear um, Algot Frisk um, speaking to someone very briefly. Um, and he comes in out um, and into sort of the, the main chamber where where you all are right now, probably sweating and uncomfortable. Um, and he looks you all over. Uh, Algot is, is sort of a, a strangely shaped man. Uh, his his limbs all appear a little bit too long in a way, and uh, he has this, this way of smiling sometimes that suggests that maybe he knows a bit more than he lets on. But he's he's also very very conservative, and in, with in information, um, and he doesn't give you very much. Um, and he comes in, uh, he looks out through each of you, and he's wearing one of his sort of mysterious smiles says a letter and he holds it up opens it up and uh, he sort of offers it if any of you want to read it um, I you would uh, yeah, Yelma would take it yeah so he hands it over to Yelma and um, if I had a way to give you a handout, I would, but I'm just <laughs> going to read it. <laughs> so imagine this in, in Hjalmar's voice. Um, it says the following. To those concerned at the society, my name is Father Bokvist, and I am the priest at Dalavyard. Strange happenings have been afoot, and my parishioners are worried. Only yesterday, a man was shot way into the village, and others have been chased away from the road. The injured man and his fever and pain only spoke of whooping devils. Sometimes at night we hear the whooping in the woods. I write to you because my predecessor in this parish left me instruction to do so were queer events to ever to befall our village. I suspect he was referring to things of the old ways, and I understand that to be your specialty. That being said, these devils in our woods appear armed with musket and shot, and so I must insist that you do not use the road into the village from the river road. Instead, trek away from the road through the woods. A trail marker will be left some way west of the village. And from there, you have not to travel north. Please send someone with all haste, as I fear things may only get worse from here. Humbly yours. <laughs> they send with... Goddamn muskets! I've never heard something such so, so ridiculous in my life. But I assume we will see later. <laughs> and I give the letter to everyone else, letting them read it. Mm -hmm. yeah, I read it very quickly, also just to check if there is anything missing. Um, and the handwriting, I guess, is written, and you know, just to check. I, I would say about the the handwriting, it it seems uh it seems to come from an intellectual. You would probably. Mm. What was the priest's name? I assume it was a priest. Uh, yeah, Father Bokvist. Okay. Uh, I'm just writing them down for reference later. Yeah. I will put that in. Um, yeah, and the and the, the Discord. I uh, can put it in the. Um, we can maybe put it in the uh, the character sheet, like have an M maybe like make an NPC tab. Oh yeah. That's... If that's okay. Uh, but for now, it's in the the, the Discord game chat. Okay. Okay, so perfect. Ah, this is quite a surprise, and so early. Who knows that we are here? Uh, 
Well, someone has been spreading rumors. And I'd like to know who, but... Hmm. <laughs> what, what are we going to do with this, then? Do you guys reckon we should intervene? I mean, well, it does sound do, interesting. Do we have some sort of, like... Um hierarchy of, like anyone who's our boss or anything like that that we have to no you you are the society right now okay so all right if you want to determine a hierarchy that's something that you'll be deciding amongst well i think i think <laughs> it falls to the, the one here who's who has divine right um in, in terms of you know place in this world um we can't let these poor people be suffering at the hands of whatever they're suffering for so we absolutely need to go check it out i go and check out. sort of nodding approvingly i'm just looking in the map how far away is this this place from Uppsala? It, it's not very far uh depending upon the method of travel you get there in a day or two days hmm. well i mean i we i definitely think we should check it out um however it's interesting that these rumors have been spreading this quickly, but I'd assume we'd have to look into that when we come back. Yeah, we'll just need to talk with my supervisor in the hospital that I need to take a two or three days leave, but it shouldn't be a problem. I mean, I mean, they can't wait for me, I'm sure. And the a, a group the of butler. people like, uh, yeah, go ahead. I'm oh, sorry, yeah, I mean, the oh. butler sort of looks at you, Simon. So there was a society before you. No. Maybe they're looking well, for them. Hmm, it could be. But well, someone has been now. Hmm. We'll see. And, uh, <laughs> he kind it's, of looks it's, at... it's for later. I don't have time to go running about Uppsala looking for people spreading rumors when there's work about. Indeed. I'm sure we've drawn attention to ourselves. The group of odd people arriving in a castle in the middle. Those kind of rumors spread easily. Uh, do you do any of you have any means of traveling, like a carriage, something like this? So I'm going to pause this right here. On that note, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, how this works? We're, what we're going to be doing now, sort of mechanically, sort of the preparatory phase. Um, and this, um, we do uh, a few things. Uh, one, you can potentially look for clues while you're still in Uppsala, if there's any ideas you have about information you could gather about this place, maybe in the library, or maybe a few contacts you have elsewhere in the city. Those are an option. Uh, the other thing that we do is um, all of you have a resources um, stat. Um, you will all roll that. Um, in fact, we can do that now if you want. Okay. Um, so you roll a number of d6s equal to your resources. All okay. of you do that. So yeah. maybe this do it in order. I don't know. What would be the good order, uh, Matt? Uh, we can do it in the order there. on um, on the stream. So um, Tony, first. if you start first, then Simon, then Rodrigo, then me. Okay. So six dice. Uh, well, in my case, it's five dice. Yeah. Right. Nice. Okay. okay. Uh, and then yeah, we would just down everyone rolls it in fact i can show we'll this go on back the and talk about what that means yeah i can actually show this um yeah just go to one success let's see should i do it then let's see so Oops. sven has the resources no successes. four yeah up at I the think... top there Oof. oh my god <laughs> all right wow. and then me That's i need to go as well and i've got five as well so i get four I get four. I think I should have. I think I should have five. I, I, I'm not totally sure. It doesn't. Sorry, matter. I've got I four. Think, I think all of you had four except for except for the aristocrat. No, I have five folks. Sorry, I oh, have sorry. Five. I meant I meant everyone. We you got cut off. Everyone what? That's oh, fine. no, I think you're doing exactly right. All right, that's what I'm trying to okay. say. <laughs> okay. Oh wow, I got one success. Oh well. Okay, so that's two in total, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you can each spend your resources uh, that you rolled on things uh, before the 
um, to, to sort of bring with you. You can combine your successes if you want to buy something that's, well, you don't even have the option of more expensive here if they have any money. Uh, <laughs> at the moment, apparently, you're, you're a little broke. Um, uh, and so, oh, I'm not sure. It should be the same in the sort of handbooks that you have, but sort of equipment lists um, begin on page 75. Okay. Um, so you can get an idea of things that you might want to bring. Um, we can put a put a hold on that at the moment if you want to sort of look for clues in the city first, and then maybe decide based on that. Yeah. Um, however, in addition to, um, in addition to what you rolled, you all have a capital value that's attached to your bit, resources. Bit lower. <laughs> okay. Ha halfway between where you were and where you are now. Sorry, we're just trying right. to adjust volume on the fly. Yeah. yeah. All right. There. Is that better? Yeah, just keep talking. I'll just, yes. okay. I'll, I'll let you know if it needs to go, but maybe a Wonderful. tiny bit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the, those of you that have resources five have um, three capital. And I think our aristocrat has Capital two is at resources four. You talking about me um, as the as the aristocrat? Yes. Unless I'm wrong. Yeah, so your character sheet, Sven, has resources four. I thought I had five on it for some reason. Oh, I was looking at the wrong I was looking at the wrong sheet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, um, for those who you have five, write three for your capital just somewhere. Make a note of it. Yep. Um, and that's and, what we can use right away. Or and that this? has two. So, in addition to that capital, you have these two successes that you rolled, right? Yeah. Um, but that's sort of your resources for this this mystery, okay. right? Um, in some total, so you can use it now or save things to use later. So, for example, if I look at this services and establishment on the book, it says courage yep. two, which is the right. availability, which I guess it means would be the uh, cost. The cost, okay, and says travel to a new location and heal one condition. Right. So, for example, so if that... we want to go to this new place, we could use two resources to go. If not, we need to go walking. Yeah, walking, or you could, <laughs> uh -huh. I mean, you could maybe like hire a cheaper carriage or something, right? Like, a, yeah. Um, gotcha. Exactly, uh, and and only one of you would need to pay that, um, and it would it would be a lot of you. Okay, so I guess uh, it's it's up to to us. I mean, I have some resources that I can use for this trip if necessary. If none of you have any courage, mm. but uh, I could appreciate uh, you know if anybody could chip in. Mm. What um, kind of what type? Uh, what time of year was this, by the way? Considering yes, going on actually, first in the winter is bad. It's actually just past midsummer. Okay, oh, that's so. perfectly fine then. Yeah. <laughs> we... That's why it's so hot. Yeah. Okay. I mean, okay. I could ship. I could ship in with some capital if uh, if we need to. Well, I I think we should definitely find a map if we're going off the road. Uh. So. Yeah, so you would be able to sort of describe where you're going. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you kind of know where you're going. You would be able to oh, okay. understand pretty easily where you're going um, without a specific map. Um, All right, then. Yeah, you're not going to be going trekking like really cross country. You'll be heading along roads for the most part. Or, I mean, you can take a train and then take a carriage or, yeah. All righty, all righty. Oh, there are trains too. Mm, there it is, yeah. Trump. Yeah, so... You, that's the quickest option would be to to sort of take a take a train up to the like there's a station on the south side of the Dahl River and then you can make your way along the postal road toward the, the village of Delafiag. I'll let you decide. For me it works both of them work very well. I, I can try by carriage, by train. I'm used to anything. <laughs> How many of you are armed? <clears throat> no. And it's just that there's um, violence in this in this um, in this place we're going to, and it might be a good idea for one of us at least to um, to take some sort of weapon, just in case it's, you know, one of us needs to muck in with some rabble. 
I cannot do any harm. You know, I'm a doctor. Well, <laughs> you can buy the you can buy our train tickets then. <laughs> I will happily do so. Well, Shalmar, what about have, you? I don't have any pistol or sword or anything. I but I'm I'm presuming we could buy something if you desperately need it, but I don't know. These musket wielding fairies can't be too difficult to deal with. Hmm. That's that's an interesting point. If we are dealing with um with Vazen, maybe maybe an old fashioned weapon or old fashioned weapons would be um more effective than something like a musket. But how well, do we know that we cannot reason with them? I mean, this seems like a you know, very direct confrontation to you. Maybe no. We can I'm just, just saying that maybe maybe we should have the means to protect ourselves if we need to. Perhaps yeah. the first thing we should do is to research on any history of uh, that, musket that was... wielding spirits. I was I was just going to get to that, my friend, but. Um... <laughs> Well, it seems that we have to do this at first because these, I have I have not heard of this before. Have any of you checks the book? Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. no, I have really. I have thoroughly studied the occult, and nothing I have come across mentions muskets. I must say. Hmm. I suspect either the father is um, has been badly informed, or his wits have taken leave of him, or perhaps there aren't any vase in at all, and it's just brigands. Mm, I was thinking about that too. Brigands masquerading as Vesen, perhaps. Indeed. I mean, there is the possibility that this letter is just nonsense. Or being led on a pointless chase as well. Of course, that's the possibility. But... Too much wine, yeah. Okay, uh, I can look in the library, if you don't mind. I mean... Yeah. Anyhow, I was already checking the books. So if we are not in a rush, maybe can I spend a few hours uh, looking around? Maybe Selma can help? Oh, yes, certainly. And maybe you two guys can find a way to get there? I'm, I'm sure that's possible. And Yalma looks a little bit disappointed that he doesn't get to hit the books on this one. Uh, <laughs> he, he'll, he'll let it go. He'll let it go. Well, I don't um, know you well enough. <laughs> uh, Yalma, just on the off case that these are brigands we're dealing with, we should at least get a pistol. I mean, I, I think you said you, you knew how to shoot a gun, right? Uh, I know how I to shoot. Like tw- I, I know did, how to shoot I did, a gun. Like- what are you talking about? I did, I did like 20 <laughs> years ago. It should be fine. They have some new fancy models these days, but it should be fine. Ah. <laughs> Let's go and find some pistols or muskets or whatever we need. Hey, uh, um, I'll leave you to your books. Yeah, so so who's who wants to be looking for the library? And what are you looking for? Uh, what, anything that talks about Masked fairies? I don't even know how to look for that. <laughs> I guess fairies, and then I, I just fairies that's a sad species. We separate fairies. books, including muskets, and books including mason, and, and then, then we cross reference. <laughs> <laughs> right. So it's it's the two of you. It's it's Selma and and Amadeo. Uh, which one of you has a better learning skill? I have uh, a learning of one. I have two. Logic. Okay. Okay. Uh, so yeah, let's let's have um, Amadeo make the roll. Um, you can get a, a bonus die for for Selma helping you. And I'm going to just imagine in your searches, maybe you're looking up the name of the village as well. Um, just... <laughs> Out of yes, 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 maybe. <laughs> just maybe you do that. It's the kind of thing we do. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. So let explain me what is I need to do then. So. Right, so you're going to make a roll that combines your um, your logic attribute, uh, okay. your learning skill. Okay, um, six. One uh, additional help die from um, Selma. And I don't know, do you guys have any equipment or anything that would give you any additional bonus? Ooh. And if they can kill for helps, sure. I have <laughs> a book collection. Yes, <laughs> yes. What's the bonus that gives? Uh, one. Okay, so you get another die because I imagine you can look through Selma's book as well. Okay, so um, that would so mean eight dice total. I think so. Yeah, that sounds right. Putting together resources, attributes, and skills. And yeah, help. I've brought a trunk of books with me to the castle. <laughs> <laughs> so cross fingers. There you All go. right. Oh, Oof. wow. 
One okay. success. Um, it, is it was the box. It was the box. <laughs> <laughs> so just a quick, just to quickly talk about pushing here. Is this yeah. um, mm. because it shows up on the thing, um, and it comes up in every year zero game about being able to push a roll. So why don't you right. tell us, Eric, about how pushing works in? Of course. Amazing. Yeah, I was going to bring it up as an option, except for it's not actually going to help you in this case. Uh, however, um, pushing um, in Basen works that um, after you uh, roll and you are not satisfied with the number of successes, maybe you have none or maybe you have not enough, you can choose to push your, your roll, which means you already rolled, if any, um, and re-roll all the other dice. Um, and the cost for doing that is you immediately have to take a condition that's related to the role you're making. In this case, it would be a mental condition. Um, in this case, uh, one success is enough, um, so pushing is actually not going to help you, um, so I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> so the successes mean, you, do you, in some cases, you need to get more than one? Or? Yes, uh, so difficulty in, in Boston is, again, a little bit different from other year zero games in that instead of modifying your dice pool to set difficulty, I set the number of successes you need. Um, so if something was particularly, like you should be rolling for easy stuff anyway, but if something, if I really wanted to underline that something was exceptionally challenging, I could require you to um, have two or even three successes to actually succeed. And, and how does it work if, for example, we have several hours? Because for this, we have several hours you know, looking at the libraries, this is still one role, it's kind of an extended role, I don't know. It's, yeah, you can so accumulate. Generally, yeah, generally you only roll once. And this is something that's true across most user games. Is, okay. Yeah. yeah. So you would, you would reflect that normally with um, maybe an advantage to your roll, so extra dice. Mm -hmm. Or you wouldn't, theoretically, you wouldn't even need to roll at all if you had enough, theoretically enough time. Yeah, I mean, that's that's absolutely true. Like, I imagine you're trying to do this in a timely manner. If you really want to brute force your way through something, then yeah. yeah. Uh, Got and it. That might come up later in this mystery. Who knows? Um, cool. Um, so you don't find anything amazingly about musket-wielding fairies. <laughs> However, you do find um, an entry in one of um, Carl Linnaeus's Carl Linnaeus is, um, Linnea would have told you, he is, he's sort of behind the origination of the society in Uppsala or in its previous um, incarnation. Um, and he has a note um, about the Dolphy Art, just sort of like scribbled in, in this journal that um, he had heard um, that people in this village had a very peculiar um, wedding customs um, related to um, a certain grove of trees. Um, and he felt that uh, Avasan is probably involved in this. Um, it, it struck him as peculiar, but he says very little more than that. So I just a like custom link to trees or a specific kind of trees, nothing? Uh, he, he just says a, a grove. A grove, OK. Yeah, you, I think you get the idea from context that he hadn't actually been there. This is just something he had heard about in, in sort of his research. OK. Better than nothing. There's something, at least there, worth investigating. Hmm. But I'm guessing this wedding custom could be pagan, no? Or it could be any Catholic or Protestant, I don't know. I think, yeah. OK. Guess we'll have to find out. Hmm. All right. Um, and so, yeah. With that information, we have a little bit, a little bit more to go on. Um, is there any sort of equipment purchases you want to make before you leave the city? Well, we're thinking about pistols or, or, or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm assuming that me and Sven are, are looking for uh, the Royal Armory of Uppsala or something, <laughs> trying to buy some of the old guns. Um, sure. Yeah. I'm going to be trying to get um, Hjalmar to buy as much as possible so I don't have to spend my my precious <laughs> my precious funds. Um, so you have your, your two successes from your resource roll. Those are free. So you can use those maybe for the transport or, or do you want to apply those toward... Oh, no. Um, Amadeo is going to be paying for the transport. We've, 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 <laughs> that's we've, right. That's right. <laughs> we've decided that already. All right. Yeah. Wonderful. Excellent. Okay. Um. It's all it's all about delegation. It's all about delegation, right? Yeah. 
And no, no, and that will come from my capital, I guess, from those three that I have. Yes, exactly. Yeah. If right, there's right. one thing I learned from my older brother, it was that you only, you never dip your hand into your own pocket if you can help it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, um, I'm going to be trying to get Hjalmar to buy, I guess, like a pistol, I think. Um, so what would a pistol go for in this, uh, this economy? If I remember right, it's uh, availability uh, four. To... Yeah, four. Yeah. 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 So it would be, yeah, you could spend the two that you have for free and then two more from someone's capital. I just want to say, Masket is three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Masket against Masket. <laughs> well, what do you think? An aristocrat knows much of war and battle. Should we take a musket or a I'm, few pistols? I'm also what, our. What do you feel I'm like? also our our um, to go a bit meta. I'm I'm our um combat monkey. When it comes to ranged weapons, so I don't know. I've I mean I wouldn't be caught dead with a musket. That's that's the weapon of a of the pro of the of the proletariat. Um, <laughs> you know the people who are on the front ranks in a battle shooting at you know enemies um it'd be a it'd be a pistol i would only be interested in a pistol or if i'm convinced that the um i kind of i kind of was trying to pass off it may, depending on what um amadeo and selma find in their research perhaps we need to get something a little bit lower tech if we do think it is a vasan and we don't think some sort of gunpowder weapon will work on them in which case um you know, I've I've done archery. I did archery lessons as a, you know, as a child, and I can easily fire a fire a bow. Of course, you did, you big tifter. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I mean, a bow is a bow is avail availability one, right? So that wouldn't be. I would be willing. I would be willing to shoot one because that's also like. In it in the in the eighteenth century when everyone's got gunpowder, it's like who uses a bow? It's 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 like a play thing for the for the rich. I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. It was actually yeah. like no, lots yeah. of aristocrats yeah. did play with bows, yeah. long bows, and all so that. So it went from being it went, yeah. from. it went from being like a weapon of the of the of the common people to being a weapon of the of the privileged. So, I would be Political okay getting classes. a bow, and it's not it's okay. affordable. So, um, well, I have free capital, and you have do you have two? I have two. Yeah. Yeah, on your own. So we could either get and you still have two extra, no? From the yeah. common pool. Yeah, we do. Right. So we could get we could get a total of seven uh, uh, bows <laughs> if we want to. Well, <laughs> but, I mean, but... I, I think the point is, <laughs> I think you'd exhaust gonna... the local market in bows. Uh, and yeah, bows. and I think the point yeah, is no. like, w who's going to fire it, right? I'm I'm happy to yeah. be the person like, not that I'm going to be but... at all, you know, hasty in firing a weapon on on anyone. No. But um, you no. know, if we need to hit something with an arrow, I'm I'm your man. So we only so, need one. Like just to set this clear, uh, from what we know about this, what mm -hmm. normally hurts them? Is it the typical like cold iron, or is it? I think I think uh, really I don't think that a lot of you know too much about Boston yeah. yet. You came here because you had this ability of sight. Like you've probably heard stories like everyone else. Like you've heard that like werewolves don't like silver, right? But I mean, yeah. yeah beyond that, you might have. Like okay, common so, so, sort of folkloric belief, but nothing. Yeah, yeah. So silver is good against werewolves and those kinds of things you might have heard. But right. okay. Well, if you, Sven, if you insist on carrying a bow around, I'm willing to pay for it. But I think we should have some better technology from the modern world with us as well, because you are going to look rather silly carrying that around in these day, this day and age. I won't look silly. <laughs> <laughs> Silly. <laughs> oh, how funny. No, no, no. I will. I will. We will pick a. We will pick a bow that will suit. That will suit me, and everything will be fine. Okay. So, uh, if I find one, I buy sort of a tiny children's costume, like a little bow for, for our friend here. And uh, I, I don't want to. I'm I'll not spend... suggesting a longbow, by the way. There's a there's stats for a longbow, but I'm not. I don't imagine I have the physique for a longbow. Oh, no, narrative, I mean, narratively. No, this wouldn't be like a heavy war bow. No, like no, it no. would be like an aristocrat's target archery longbow. Yeah, I think yeah, that's yeah. the most sensible thing. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. In any case, and if no one stops me, I'm going to spend two of my capital and two the three two other free ones for 
for buying a, a pistol because I don't okay. trust uh, using an arrow uh, for everything we need. And uh, I'm going to let him buy his uh, bow on his own because he has to have some money. <sighs> <laughs> All right. So yeah, okay. uh, so yeah, Yalma so, sort of takes this stuff that we got from Amadeo, and, and he just takes that <laughs> and some other money, and buys a pistol. And he looks at you, and he's like, "So you're gonna buy that bow, or what?" Well, I'm just looking at this this very fancy crossbow with with all these. <laughs> <laughs> With all these runes carved on it, look. I mean, we know that runes are ancient, right? They they probably mean something to the to the Vazen. Um But uh, you know, you I'm... buy yourself a crossbow, Sven. It's gonna be fine. <laughs> no, no. I was thinking this could be something that you could buy for me. Hear me out, right? Because this crossbow <laughs> could save your life. You're investing in your own future. You know. You're always speaking about the bloody proletariat and how they're so low and no and all of that. And here you're asking for me to buy you a little bow. Get your own goddamn crossbow. I've already bought this pistol. I'm out of money. <sighs> I didn't know you aristocrats were this down on your luck. <laughs> Damn, and I like... sort of look very, I look very smug as I say that, uh, because mm. I know, of course, yeah, that yeah. Sven is a little bit poor. I'll go, I'll like go so. a bit red, and I'm going to spend my two, I'm going to, I'm going to make a show of um, spending my two freebies in one of my, one of my, it's, you said one of my resources, right? Uh, so those are spent on, um, on, Simon on the pistol. pistol, I think. Oh, shit. But we can <laughs> switch it around. Wait, wait, but why are you getting the pistol, and I'm not, oh, <laughs> I mean, if you want the pistol, you can have it. I, I don't care about it, the material possession of the pistol, but I've bought it for us now. No, the pistol's okay. fine. The pistol's fine, then, I guess. Um, I'll buy a bow, I guess, with one, okay. just in case the pistol doesn't work. Oh, and I'm right. going to be looking longingly at the at the crossbow. Yeah. <laughs> you can get that next time. So. It's, it's fine. I would buy it, but pff, it's... <laughs> It's clearly too fancy. They, the person making this clearly didn't make it for serious use. Look at this rune here. It's carved completely in the wrong direction. No, no, no. no. <laughs> yeah. And I look at your children's little plaything, and I'm like, oh, sure. So I'll buy a, find I'm buying a normal bow, but I'm going to be okay. trying to get my, my, my dirty fingers on the uh, pistol at the first opportunity. Mm. That means we still ha I still have one capital. Like. I okay. still have one capital. Yeah. So, uh, so I yeah, go, go ahead, Tony. No, no, no. no go ahead. No, we'll, take a break. Have... we'll take a break from us. Go on. So I have a question regarding resources. So right now we are buying stuff. Yeah. That means that that belongs now to our society, to our group, and that will be every every new mystery will have all these resources again. So the pistol, the bow, or whatever we buy, does that remain and we refresh our resources? Yes. Yeah, so you'll, you'll refresh your resources there, mystery specific. Um, okay. However, the, the things that you are buying, um, I'll need to check again, uh, sort of between sessions. Um, there's a limit to the amount of stuff you can have on your, your character sheet, and then you have to mm -hmm. kind of start storing it in a place that you don't have to store yet within the castle, which is like an upgrade you can buy. But we'll, we can talk about this a bit later. Get there. Yeah, um, so this is part of kind of building. So this would be like the stronghold in Forbidden Lands, in a exactly, way, the castle. Exactly, exactly yeah. OK. I would like to spend my three capital on something that will actually help us in this adventure, ah. which will be uh, liquor and fine wines. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so I, I think you guys already have liquor amongst you, so you guys are going to be well liquored up. All right. You can never um, have too much, though. Come on. Yeah. I guess it's not a day. You have the heavy liquor, right? Yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah. Just okay, to wonderful. For anesthesia. All right. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Self-medication. Um, <laughs> all right, awesome. Um, unless there's anything else uh, you want to do for preparations um, or looking for any other clues in the uh, city, we can move on to... How, how do rations work? Let's say that we go to this new city and we need to stay some, somewhere. Do we need to start to, to have resources to, to pay for a hotel in the new place yeah. or we sleep on the street? You'll, yeah. Uh, so I'll just say that the letter included a thing that he would cover your sort of room and board. Okay. Um, but yeah. Just thinking about the resources, like if we spend everything, but we should keep something safe for later. Yeah, I mean, you 
can argue it either way. Also, the sort of capital, once you're on the sort of adventure, once we leave the city, mm -hmm. you can make rolls and like another resource roll. Mm. Um, basically, to purchase things during the during the um, okay, okay, and if you can't afford it, then you use your capital. Very good, clear. I'm going to spend my last resource, temporary resource point, um, or what's it called again? Um, yeah, capital. Capital, capital um, to buy uh, like a. Nobody else has bought weapons other than the two of us, right? Got a pistol and a mm -hmm. pistol and a bow, which are both ranged. Um, yep. So I'm gonna buy something like a knife, I guess. Okay. I mean, I'm looking at the I'm looking at the the melee weapons, and the axe makes a little bit more sense from a role playing perspective in terms of meta stuff. But um, I think a knife would make, I think getting a dagger, buying a dagger would would make sense for my character. So okay. I'll do that too. Absolutely. Yeah, I I'm no good at melee combat, so <laughs> he wouldn't even look at it. I'm not either. I'm either. I've got three physique and nothing else. Anyway. I I'm so curious to find out what Hjalmar is good at. <laughs> <laughs> but well, it's not, being, it's not being physical, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Um, yeah. All right. We'll, we'll move on from here then. Um, so, and what we'll do is we'll say that you can sort of purchase your passage um, and we'll use this other system. The, and just to sort of demonstrate the, the various systems. Uh, so, um, there you can roll your resources again, see if you can pay for the carriage without dipping into your capital. Okay. Uh, so, so I will roll again five dice. Yep. And see what they get. Yoohoo! Two nice. Oh, that's nice. perfect. Wow. Yeah. So you keep your capital, you're able to. Yeah, I mean, perhaps like you said, right? You went to your boss and you're like, oh, I need a couple of days off. And like you, you were able to get your wallet. <laughs> you <know? laughs> Heck, a bonus. Um, <laughs> excellent. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, fantastic. All right, so we'll move on to, to the journey to getting there. Oh, no. Um, oh, we've uh, but but we've as we, they said that we should have stopped before, right? In the, in the letter, it say stop before north of the town and go through the woods. That's right. So yeah. So they're going be... to. So the idea is that you would hire the carriage, and they're going to bring you um, to the to the sort of river postal road, sort of near the the road that leads to the village itself, and then you. Mm. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. As I described previously, it's hot, it's dusty. Uh, the journey there, you're going to be going sort of throughout, because you spent a significant amount of the day looking through the library, getting things prepared, um, making your purchases. Um, so you kind of start late at night, maybe you pay actually a little bit more for the carriage that they, they take you overnight. Um, and so the night brings some amount of relief from, from the heat. Um, it, it feels like it hasn't rained in quite a while. There's a, a small drought going on. Um, it's stuffy, and despite it, you know, being being dry like it is, it's also just like a little bit humid, just enough to make it horribly uncomfortable. Um, the, the the coach ride is pretty uneventful itself. Um, you're, you're passing through. Uh, I, I imagine the route you're taking sort of just going to bisect sort of postal road that I mentioned before. Mostly you're, you're going through wilderness um, and, and most people are actually going the opposite direction to you. Like a lot of people that might've had a break over midsummer are going back to the textile factories and back to work in the city. And you guys are headed the other way. Um, by, by early the next morning, um, you'll sort of, uh, you'll sort of be, be close in. Uh, Imagine, you know, the sound of, of the creaking of the wheels and things like this as it bumps along this, this, this not paved or very well taken care of road, but at least it's not muddy. Um, as, as you sort of request that you ask the carriage driver to sort of drop you sort of at the intersection with the road that leads into the village, but he does not take you down it. He seems a little confused by this, um, but Paid him good money and he doesn't ask very many questions um and so so yeah you are you're sort of in 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 the rural wilderness now um 
on this road, um, as you've been directed, the, um, you should head, head west along the road and look for the trailhead. Or you can go down the road that he told you not to go down. <laughs> it would be much quicker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and you can hear you can hear the insects of the early morning sort of buzzing around. There's some birds chirping. It seems pretty pleasant, and it's not quite so hot yet in, in the new day. Hmm. OK, so I guess I'm, we, we are sitting there with our stuff. I'm carrying my yeah. medical bag, my doctor yeah. bag, in case we need to check anything. And so I'm assuming I took everything from my equipment. And mm -hmm. um, I say, shall we go? Let's go through the woods. It looks like it's a pleasant day to walk. Why not? You know, mm -hmm. I think we if they told us not to take the road. You no, know, let's do it. Well, it's either because they genuinely warned us or it is because they're hiding something along the road that they don't want us to see before we come into town. But let's just go through the forest this time. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're going to let some some rural superstition decide the route we take? Well, if you want to be the scout, you can be the scout. I'll be the scout. I'm not afraid of their superstitious nonsense. Well, they're superstitious with mascots, I remind you. Ah. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Might I remind you that we are, we are armed as well? Um, well. With a knife? I have I have this I have this bow. I could hit <laughs> I could hit a sparrow at one kilometer if I really wanted to. I won't waste an arrow to prove it, but trust me, we'll be fine. Matt, can you just explain to me how is Sven dressed? How does this aristocrat look in the woods? Garishly. I'm I'm a I'm a I'm like a court not like a court, sorry, like a um a parlor magician, right? So I imagine I've got a very brightly colored jacket oh it's it's just after midsummer right um god i'm trying to think of what the fashion would be like whatever the fashion would be like in the summer <laughs> it would be bright i'm imagining like red maybe some sort of like um golden detail on it that sort of thing absolutely no good at hiding in the woods <laughs> in what i'm wearing um and like poofy you know poofy sleeve endings or whatever um just very, right. very fashionable, okay. very colorful. Okay, and that ca good. That that fits the mental image I had quite precisely. <laughs> so yeah, uh, yeah. And I probably and I'm probably so. not wearing practical boots either. To be that's probably why I don't want to go through the um the woods. Hmm. Well, if you want to go up the road, oh, cravat then it's and a top hat. Fine. Absolutely, a cravat and a top hat. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's perfectly reasonable. The top hat's going to be yeah. just slightly off to, you know, at an angle as well. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Y y Yalmar is also wearing a top hat, but a more sensible one, I I'm sure. And uh, yeah, he, 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 I I'm fine with you taking the, the, the route in if you want to have a stroll. I'm sure no one will notice you in those clothes. <clears throat> so let's be clear. Am I understanding <laughs> right that you guys are splitting? Oh, you're coming oh, with no, no, us, I surely. <laughs> I, I believe I believe the plan is for Sven to lead the way, and we follow from a reasonable well, distance. S significant distance, I'd say. <laughs> um, I'm okay with that. What, what's What's the worst thing that could happen? You just have to run back. Yes. Well, don't don't worry. I have my medical bag. If anything you happens to you, you won't need it. You might need it for anyone who might think to attack us, but it won't. You happen. know, if if we do find him a few miles further on, I do have my chemical equipment. A few miles. Sure, don't I, let me out of I'm your sure sight. It, You'll get lost. I'm sure. It, I'm sure I can make make I'm, out I'm, the course of death. I'm I know pretty it, sure we can see you a few miles off. I know it's a road, <laughs> but listen, you wanted to go off into the woods. I I I know people like you. You're gonna. You're gonna hear a noise and go running off into the woods, and before you know it, you will look, you've lost sight of me. Don't get, don't stay too far back. And it's listen, well. I think I should have, I think I should have the pistol. Did you buy a pistol <laughs> or a revolver? Yeah. Uh, I imagine it's a, a more of like a single shot revolver, oh, not okay. yeah. revolver, a pistol. So yeah, that was my. I'm, you know, if anything happens, I will be the one up, up front. Um, I think I should have it. Plus, if I have to fire it at anything, you'll hear it and you'll be warned. Whereas if I use my bow, I'm being stealthy. 
They won't see what's happening, but you also won't know what's happening. <laughs> Maybe. Yes. So Very well. Lead the way. I mean, why not? Uh, fine. Whatever. You can have the you can have my pistol and, and Yelma throws it at your feet. Oh. Unloaded though. <laughs> he doesn't throw it loaded. That would be incredible. That would be that would be dangerous. <laughs> okay. Um so I, yeah. I load it then, I guess. I, I, I kind of pick it up from my feet, walk over to you, hold my hand out like for a shot. Mm. A, whatever they call it, for single-use bullets. Like, is it a bullet, I guess? Bullet's well, fine. Cartridge. Yeah. All right, then let's go. Let's yeah. um, head on our way. Yeah. Okay. Down the yeah, middle. Th this seems like a brilliant idea. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I will so, be very so, observant in it. I don't know if this, you know, we'll be looking to the woods and see if I yeah. see anything That's out of the ordinary. Yeah. And I will keep it maybe, as, as we said, a little bit of a distance, not because, not just in case. I come yeah. out to a distance. Let's just put a number on it. <laughs> 10 meters, 20? Uh, let's say three, four feet. Okay. So, yeah, just a little bit. You just have, so it's like Sven's walking out just a few feet in front of you as the rest of you are grouped up, right? <laughs> what I'm hearing. Okay. Awesome. Um, <laughs> okay. That, that's fine right. by me. Okay. Um, and that's what we'll go with. Uh, yeah, so, so you, you begin going down this, uh, down this road. There's actually, you, you see one of these little signs, right? And it has sort of etched into it, like Battle of Yards, and there's like a little, very helpful arrow, like the sign is carved into like a sort of wedge, so you know which way to go. Uh, and uh, and you begin down the road. Um, you hear the sort of buzzing, chirping that I sort of mentioned before. It seems like a pretty pretty lovely day so far. Um, the you can see like as you get a little bit further in, you you start you're like into the woods proper now. Um, and this is a pretty small track. It's meant for sort of one carriage going one way. Um, you can see um, the, you can see prints along the way from horses. They seem really old. Um, and then you come to a point where Sven, you'll notice on the ground, there's um, what looks like dried blood and there's you can see that like this area is incredibly disturbed. Like there, there clearly have been footprints like going different directions. And because it hasn't rained in so long, um, this is all pretty well preserved uh, where you are. Um, and check out the blood. I guess it's dry, right? Yes, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's sort of very dry and dull. And I think only because you're being so super observant that you, you know, probably even notice at all that and the fact that the ground is so disturbed. Um, and so, uh, if one of you would you like, uh, you can make a sort of investigation role, sort of get an idea of sort of what happened here. And, uh, yeah, I'll have a look. I'll let, I'll let you all Sweden come up and I'll, I'll keep, I'll, I'll keep a look around us. I'll help Simon if that's possible, just by looking at if I see any other kind of, I don't know, like more blood or any other signs of mm. damage, I guess, yeah. like medical stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I was actually going to say that, that uh, you would probably look at Amadeo and like, you're a doctor. Okay, yeah, tell me about look... this and this and this and this, and like, I'll have a look. Well, if um, it was not dry, maybe I could tell you something. But being so dry, maybe I can see if there is a big splatter or it's a small kind of guess if it comes from a main organ or something like this. But... Sh should I roll investigation in that case? But I'm is, is the magnifying glass going to help? Yeah, sure. Okay. I, 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 I can see what I'm... Before you roll, though, I have already forgotten something. On your journey here in the carriage, you can all have chosen an advantage. Mm. Um, and that reflects sort of um, any sort of mental or physical preparations you could do during your carriage ride to get ready for this. Um, and what that means is that, um, or maybe you can determine that perhaps uh, you'll have some sort of contact um, here in the village. Uh, there are a number of different ways it can come out, um, but typically in play what that will mean is you get a two die um, advantage to one roll for the mystery. Mm. Um, so if you guys want to think about what uh, sort of advantage you would have it can be anything developed. that we think uh, of. It's not that there are yeah. no like, a specific details that we... Uh, actually, 
I've been thinking like one thing that Yalma might actually have done, uh, like as a back investigation sort of thing, would be mm -hmm. to look at the the protocols from the uh, the courts to see if there's been if there are any criminals around. Like um, because he's been looking for that kind of thing. So like if you could pressure someone and like, oh, you are sort of a brigand, <laughs> like for the people. Mm -hmm. If if there is if there are no this, and it's obviously something. Okay. Else. Kind of all right yeah no we can definitely go with that um yeah, yeah keep that in mind or, and remind me of it when you think yeah. it might be appropriate yeah um i mean yeah, I, i'm other... not yeah you... sorry yeah, yeah. Hmm. Any, any other ideas for advantages uh, might have... selma could be very focused on uh basin and any information regarding them okay. does that sound reasonable or yeah. is it too too vague it's a it's a um i think it's a little Rod, but you do you did have your books and you were doing some research before you came so i, I think we can make that work all right um, yeah if not i can come up with something more specific yeah no that's good for now right. was was sven thinking about his his youth training with a bow i think he's completely fixated on shoot like i think he's probably pissing himself a bit that if he has to use the bow um he hasn't probably <laughs> held one he's 37 years old he probably hasn't right. held one in 20 years right yeah, um yeah, yeah. so he's probably shitting and pissing himself thinking like what the hell am i gonna do if i actually have to use this thing <laughs> um so trying to you know i guess the advantage is gonna be related to that you know going over all the okay. all you know trying to recall all of the lessons he had and all that kind of thing yeah so, uh, and then me following a thought i guess you know since we heard that there are muskets and fairies shooting these muskets and somebody yeah. got shot already maybe yeah. i'm trying to think of all the procedures that i did already around weapons you know if i save the life of somebody already that got shot or things like this maybe i'm thinking of medical ways that you know yeah just to help on this later if we got that injured. makes a lot of sense yeah cool yeah uh, so you were um, helping you right uh, with yeah. uh role so yeah okay should I roll now? Or... Uh, is, so what, for it. Is, yeah. is um Selma also helping? Looking like, like looking around. What's Selma doing? I was gonna ask uh, about how my camera in the eighteen hundreds works. <laughs> yeah, I imagine it's a it's a pretty big setup in this case. It's like one of these uh, like you imagine like the Civil War photography where you have to set up the whole thing. I may I imagine you're just carrying it over your shoulder. Yes. Um, if you want to set it up and take a picture of the, the scene. Uh, I would most certainly want to do that. And, may, and maybe we can switch my advantage to something about that. Like maybe I'm, I'm thinking about getting a really good picture. Uh, okay. Something interesting. Okay. All right. We'll think about how to do that in practice. All right. Mm. But cool. for anyway, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm definitely going to take a picture of the crime scene. Okay. Mm. Uh, yeah, so some of you start setting up your camera. Um, awesome. Yeah, so uh, yeah, go ahead and, and uh, make your roll, um, Simon. And um, yeah. So is that two for helping and one for the magnifying glass? Yeah, let's do that. OK, in that case, it's 11 dice. Oh, wow, now that's a dice pool. Poof. That is a big dice pool. One oh, wow. success. <laughs> <laughs> oh, holy moly. Well, at so... least it's one. What wow. you figure out, Yalmar, is that in addition to, you can see where someone was injured and collapsed, but you also realize that there was a second person here that was with the one that had collapsed and they escaped behind you. They went out the back. So you get the idea that there were two people here who had been attacked and one of them is no longer here. It was not accounted for in the letter that you had received. Hmm. Um, yeah. Does that person, like from anything you could see, does that person also look injured? Or does it look like that person just ran off? Uh, it looks like they ran off. You don't see any, any evidence that they were injured. Um, though, I mean, there's a lot of sort of, there's a lot of disturbance here. It's, it's entirely possible that they were injured, but not terribly. Um, it would be hard to say. Hmm. Did, we, did we find, I don't know, I mean, I guess 
Yeah, we could. I don't know if by, by firing a musket, there would be something remaining, some powder, gunpowder, or something like what is used to lead the things. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if we don't find anything about that. No, I, mean, I don't know if I can ask actually because he's it's Simon who was looking, but that's no, fine. Um, yeah, I mean, I could push it, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't help. Yeah, that's about no. as much as you're gonna learn from this. Okay. Um, That's interesting. Okay. Now, I need uh, whichever one of you has the highest vigilance skill. Well, I'm vigilance. I'm keeping in I'm keeping a lookout. So I was deliberately right. not helping. So that would yeah, be... that's that's a good point. Yeah, everyone else is pretty busy. So I that's my fine. vigilance is is six. I've got a six as well. So all right. So okay. Sven, let me just check if I don't think I have anything that can help here. My fancy disguise isn't going to help. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Not now. No. So here we go. Two successes. Okay. So, Sven, you're you're keeping out, and uh, you're keeping a lookout as the others are sort of talking about their conclusions and taking pictures of of what had happened here, and um, to the to the northeast. Sven and the trees a fair distance away. You catch like a quick movement. And it seems like uh, what you see is sort of like pale and, and fleshy. And there's sort of just a movement in the trees. And then whatever had moving seems to have stopped again within the trees. So you don't have like a, a visible you don't have like a contact, so to speak, but okay. you kind of know the direction you saw this movement. So when you say in the trees, do you mean like up in the trees? Like, ah, uh, sorry. Yes. No, sort of out into the forest at okay. ground level. Yeah. At ground level. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'll, I'll kind of, um, when I see that, I'll kind of take a step over just so I'm near to the others and say quietly, I've just seen something in the woods to our Northeast. What do you think? Shall I go have a look? You I'll go have it. a look. I've got I've yeah. got my bow my bow armed specifically, not the not the pistol, <laughs> not my one shot pistol. I'll save that for, you know, a more opportune moment. Just a quick question. Uh, uh, yeah. Northeast is uh, to the village direction to the village, or uh, so the, we're east uh, of the village. Where right now, right? you are, uh, yeah. So it would be east of the village. From where mm. you are, the village is to the northwest. Um, Hmm. And as you're sort of having this conversation, you're interrupted by the sound of whoop, whoop, uh, coming from that direction in the woods. And Sven, you see a person, what looks like a person, but with like these strange sort of like deer antler headdress. Other than that, looks completely stark naked, peek out from around a tree, and level a musket in your direction. And uh, we're going to go into initiative. I did not plan on us going into combat in this uh, first thing, but this is where we are now. Um, <laughs> so this is why you listen to strangers' indication in letters. Yeah, <laughs> it's all fine. It's all good. Okay, Look, first casualty, well. I guess. I all hope right. they fucking miss. <laughs> <laughs> you have nothing. What we're gonna do? Um, I'm going to draw. Um, initiative cards for you okay. um, to mm -hmm. make this very easy. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to go down my list here. Uh, so I have um, Amadeo first. We have a six. Then we have Sven. Sven is on top of Booyah! <laughs> then we have... Lady Thelma. Luck is smiling upon us. And then we have uh, Hjalmar. Right, let's let's write these down because um, we can actually yep. swap initiative amongst ourselves too. Um, That's true. Yeah. So, uh, so if you want me, it. I can read back through what the yep. initiatives are. Yeah. Great. So Amadeo has six. Yeah. Sven has one. Yeah. Selma has four. Yeah. And Hjalmar has three. Mm. Okay. Sven. I mean, I'm not. Uh, 
it's pointing Sorry, I just at... wanted to, a yeah. quick, like, instructional is that, uh, like any other user zero game, you have a fast action and slow action by default. Mm -hmm. uh, the fast action is generally sort of movement preparation type action. And a slow action can be uh, as well a movement, but also an attack or... or so how far away exactly is this um, this person from us right uh, now? Yeah, so um, speaking mechanically, uh, we're probably talking like three zones. OK. Um, so he's, a, he's a pretty good way off. Yeah, so I'm going to, you know, I'm, I, have my, I have my bow like ready. Um, yeah. I'm not going to draw it and point it at him. It's, you said it was a, it was a male? Looks like a male. Yes. Yeah, no, it's definitely a male because you can see that he's a male. <laughs> Understood. Because reasons. Because reasons. Yes. <laughs> this is an explicit pod, uh, an explicit show, so we could, I, I, we could I, use I more colorful language. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. Um, yes. Um, I'll, I'm, I'll stop right there. I was, yeah, okay. Yep. Um, so I'm going <laughs> to. We've been down this path before. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I can actually use two moves instead of a full, instead of a fast, I can use two fast actions, right? Instead of a fast yeah. and a slow. Absolutely. So I can close some of the distance. Um, although that would kind of be narratively, it'd be like sprinting at him, I, I think. So I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to walk calmly, use a, a slow, a fast action to walk calmly towards him. I'm not going to okay. be lifting my bow up, but it's, it's got an arrow knocked on it. And I'm kind of just, okay. I'm kind of just holding it, you know, Yep. ready, but kind of pointing down a little bit. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll shout out, hey, friend, there's no need to point that weapon at us. Why don't we talk? Okay. And um, I'll... I'll, I'll just waste my slow action. OK. Um, and I'll get to, um, yeah, yeah, I mean, and yeah, so we'll, yeah, that's good. Uh, I'll get to sort of their reaction when mm -hmm. it's their sort of turn. Um, uh, and then we have um, Yalmar. Yeah, um, <clears throat> seeing uh, Sven approaching and not saying what he's seeing, <clears throat> uh, Yalmar will mostly be observing what is happening. Maybe <clears throat> because he's not an idiot, he would presume that what is happening is exactly what we were told would happen. So I think he's going to hunker down a little bit. And he, having given away his pistol, he can't do anything. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> he's just going to look at the rest of them and like, <clears throat> so the the forest seems like a good idea. And that's what he'll do. OK. Um, Selma. So ha has only Sven seen this, uh, this creature or the rest so of Sven us? Sven made aware you aware that he had seen something in a, in a direction. Um, so I think it's just a matter of looking in that direction and seeing. All right. So so okay. so, if, so if Selma looks in that direction and then sees this creature, uh, what she'll do immediately is turn the camera around, point <laughs> in that direction, and right. try to get the best shot. And if I can't from that distance, because, you know, 1800s, I will yep. definitely pick up the camera and try not to draw attention to myself like a journalist would. Like, like the shot is Sven and the basin, and I'm trying to be on the sideline, <laughs> trying to capture it. OK. All right, wonderful. Um, <laughs> excellent. Um, Amadeo. So since I also don't know what's going on, and I guess I'm there, I will just, if there's a tree nearby, probably, and if I, you know, looking by where Sven is looking, I, I guess I try to hide behind a tree that kind of covers me from that direction, if possible. And just look mm -hmm. at to Ben like what the fuck. Okay, uh, <laughs> so you're taking cover, is what I'm hearing. Yes, yes, great. Um, Sounds it's like a good idea. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, great. Uh, let's see. Let's. Um, all right. Yeah. So, um, Sven, this thing answers you by just whooping again, and another one sort of rises up. Sort of, it seems like out of a bush. Um, also sort of leveling a musket, and a third one um, starts running out um, from the trees. Uh, this third one um, is, is a female, unlike the other two, um, is brandishing a saber above her head, and just, again, like, whoop, whoop, and she's charging toward you as the one that you had first seen takes a shot at you, Sven. <laughs> you know what? Uh, 
It'll be fine. <laughs> okay. Rolling a, new, rolling a new character for next session. Mm. Um, BPK, maybe? I don't know. Just saying. Okay. <laughs> so, this is happening. Um, the shot goes off and it echoes across all the trees around you. And the birds that you had heard just like peacefully chirping flutter in all directions. Um, and Sven, like, uh, there's a there's a tree right next to you, and you can feel like the bark kind of explode out, out of the tree and like hit your face as the shot goes just wide of you. Um, yeah, uh, and Sven, it's it's your turn again. Damnation! Uh, <laughs> and I should say, this woman charging you with a saber, uh, she, she's sort of in the next zone over from you at this point. Yeah. I apologize, madam, <laughs> for what I'm about to do. <laughs> all right um yeah let's let's have it okay so i'm using um precision which is four range combat which is two and a bow gives me one bonus so i'm rolling seven dice that sounds right are you gonna apply is there any advantage? is there any um negative modifiers oh, there's no negative five modifiers in this no. Um, I am going no, to apply my. A... I can use it once, right? So I think. That's right. I think using it now before. Yeah, I'm gonna use it now. Yep. Because I don't want to get. Okay. I don't want to get hacked up. If she if if she closes the distance, I've, I'm rubbish at fighting at close quarters. Yeah. I could try and use some magic tricks, pull a dove out of my hat, and um, confuse her. <laughs> well, we might we might get there. So I'm rolling nine dice. We might. Okay. Right. Fantastic. That's yeah, with that's my two right. my two advantage, and yep. uh, I will probably be pushing this if I need to. Two dice. I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it there. Um, the the damage for a bow is one, so I don't I, I don't get any extra damage for that. But I do two two damage with my arrow. Okay. Um, yeah, and so you can you also have um, choices, right? Like you can you can have that extra success be damage. Um, let's just take a quick look. Sure. Um, again, because we're we're doing this for the first time, um, you can exchange initiative cards with her you don't want to do that because her mine's, mine's great yeah uh yeah you could um stress her by causing mental conditions rather than physical ones um can i uh, knock her you can make her drop her weapon um or have her sort of i don't really think that makes sense though, so we're not gonna apply that so those are your options with the extra success I think I'm gonna go with um, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have her drop her weapon. Okay. Oh, hold on, hold on. Let me just think about this for a second. Sure. Yeah, I'm not I'm not sure I actually am prepared to kill her outright. Um, okay. So I'm yeah I think I think trying to wing her or something like aim for a shoulder or something she's holding it above her head is what yeah. I would be trying to do. And then I would like to use my fast action to retreat. Okay. So backpedal basically. So you you take the shot and then head back. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I mean, as exactly as you described, you, you sort of wing her shoulder um, uh, with an arrow, right? Uh, so it, it digs in. She kind of does, like, the half-turn thing, and, and the saber sort of drops out of her hand, and she screams horribly. And at, at this range, like, as you're taking aim at her, you kind of get a better view of her. Her, her feet are incredibly bloody, like, her legs... Um, in, in fact, most of her body is covered in, in scratches, and like the other, like the other one you had seen, she's wearing this strange, like deer antler headdress. Um, she drops the the saber behind her. Um, then we uh, go to um, Hjalmar. Hjalmar. Yes, um, having seen this and being defenseless, uh, <clears throat> I'll. Sorry. Uh, it's fine. Uh, yeah, I'll. Uh... I'll sort of back off, uh, actually, and trying to make as much space as possible uh, as I'm trying to make my... make. Yelma is trying to get out of this situation and letting Sven handle it as, as well as he can, uh, because he can't drive them off. <laughs> because he has no weapon. <laughs> He'll I mean, hide behind a tree. You definitely have the option of running toward the village or away from it. Down the how, fa how, how, far is it? how far uh, is it? How far is it? You don't see it yet. I mean, but I don't think you get the impression that's very far away. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, actually, um, 
If that's sort of retreating, like... sorry, retreating behind you from where you are is kind of retreating to the other side of the woods. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So yeah, okay. In that case, uh, uh, he'll actually start moving in the direction of the village, uh, try, like stealthily. I'd, I'd guess he'll try to do that without. Like he would go into the the, sh the, the shrubberies and all of that around. Okay. The that so before. you're kind of like going off the road, but toward the village. I mean, yeah. stealthily, you can't. There's no sneaking, right? <laughs> they oh, yeah. know you're here. Um, yeah. But you can. So are you like running, or are you like going yeah. through the woods, going along the road? I, I, I guess he'd be running, but he's not. He's not trying to make himself a prime target by looking menacing or anything. He's just trying okay. to get away. Yeah. Because uh, maybe if we manage to warn the village, maybe we can get some help. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, so you take off down the road. I imagine you're using your full action to do that toward the village. Yeah. Does that sound right? That would be an yeah, a and flee action, right? Uh, he's not engaged, um, and there's no one that can is close enough to chase him down. So yeah. unlike Forbidden Lands, I, there's no sort of yeah. disengage role you have to yeah. run. There's a flee yeah. action, uh, though, right? Uh, there is, yeah. I don't remember that. Use, hey, agility, use agility to flee. A successful test means that you leave the fight. Yeah, that sounds perfect. Uh, yeah, so if you want to like flee, flee, and not be in the fight anymore, we can do that instead of just making distance. Um, that would that would I mean, kind of mean you're I, out of you're completely out of it out of the fight though. You have no chance of exactly. coming back. Yeah, I'll 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 try to make space as we go and throw, so, 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 I, I don't want to abandon uh, okay. my society friends. So I, I'm trying to make <laughs> distance, but trying to like, I, I I could actually use my short accent action to just tell Davis to just like. Let's get to the village, okay. that kind of thing, yes. and just try to the coax us on to, towards the village instead of standing and fighting like fools. Perfect. So yeah, that's what he's doing. Yep. Excellent. Oh, I all have right. a question. So shouting and doing all this is an action? It's not a free action? There are no free actions like this? It would be a free uh, action. So I it would I'm, be sure I'm wondering, I'm wondering. Saying a few words is, is part of a fast action here. I think in Forbidden Lands it would be free. But yeah, I remember right. it's more like if you're, it, it, depending on what you're trying to do, if you're trying to use like a manipulation type of thing and a skill is required, then it counts that as an action. More, but if you're just, yeah. you're, you're usually allowed to just shout instructions or communicate with people. It's when you're trying to mechanically use a skill, like, an, yeah. like one of right, your empathy yeah. skills, that it, it, it becomes an action normally. Yeah, shouting more than a few words would be an yeah. action. Just, yeah. just shouting. It. So yeah, you can yeah. you can make your full movement um, away. Yeah. Um, excellent. Um, then we are uh, going to Selma. All right. So uh, Selma uh, sets up the tripod, uh, positions <laughs> the camera, pulls the cloth over her head. Yeah. And if at all possible, she'll try to get a shot of Sven pulling back the bow just before he shoots as yeah. the as the vase of, as the uh, yeah is it uh, yeah as the woman yeah. with the antler thing goes with a saber and possibly if she can get the two in the back with the muskets <laughs> even better oh yeah and, no definitely and after yeah. that she packs up and runs <laughs> uh, i think you're 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 composing this photograph and then you're able to get your camera back up on your shoulder and that's sort of your your turn <laughs> yeah. excellent yeah so it, it you, you hear the of like what is it phosphorus right that that mm -hmm. makes like the light I think so, yeah. And then you, yeah all right excellent yeah and, and you get you're pretty sure you have the shot you want um awesome cool uh Hjalman. uh not Hjalman. uh I'm a, I'm a there so a uh, quick question regarding the site so mm -hmm. what does it mean regarding basin so if we see a basin we should know that they are something different so if this if these bodies that we are seeing are real humans and not basin should we know that about that or they, um, they look they look like naked screaming cut up people um okay. it doesn't they don't look supernatural but maybe mm. there's super, something supernatural going on okay um, so but the, yeah because i don't know very much about this site so i'm just mm. wondering would i be able yeah. to earn something different or just right so generally it would mean that yeah creatures that want to be invisible you can see them okay um, Okay. In this case, no one's trying to be subtle. <laughs> <laughs> Most <Must> if. <have. laughs> um, so I look at, uh, so I really, so I see everyone running and I'm looking at this Ben and I'm saying, "You fool, run!" <laughs> <laughs> and I kind of not leave, but I guess I get closer to Sven, kind of support him at the same time. 
and just okay. waiting for him like to something. We are not prepared for this. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, sounds good. Um, Sven, I. So they're shooting I, at you more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have they actually shot? Uh, they shot at you uh, once last yeah. round, and now this round, two of them are going to shoot at you. All right, okay, brilliant. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> I can take it. Okay, let me just make sure I have my. Let's see if he right. bleeds bla blue or not. <laughs> right. oh, yeah. <laughs> well, they are bloody. I mean, they, they are bloody already, right? Oh so no, we... I think he means then. Ah. Because he's ah, ah, yeah, you mean yeah, 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 okay, got it. Yeah, all, all right. right. Um, yeah, there's no armor to speak of. No, nope. Um, nope. No, there's not. Uh, Sven, you are uh, you're hit. Um, you drop your bow, uh, and you take three conditions. Boom, Holy boom, boom. Molly. Okay. So I, I imagine, what is that? That's battered, exhausted, and wounded, It's all right? three of my physical conditions, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So one, one uh, more, and I'm broken. Yeah. Yes. And the next one is shooting at you. Uh, <laughs> so I imagine this was just a... And this caused you to drop your bow, right? Like, yeah. It was probably... You were probably winged like you did to her, only with a musket shot. Um, so you're not wounded, wounded yet. Well, you are wounded. Well, I don't have a critical injury, yet. right? I'm not exactly. injured, yeah. Um, and yeah, this this uh, hits as well. Uh, Sven, you're broken. Oh, uh, it's dear. time for a critical injury. <laughs> right, it was nice knowing you all. <laughs> let me roll my so, uh, let me roll my d66 here. Yes. <laughs> oh, this no. is not how I anticipated this going, by the way. Well, I knew I should have resisted the 42. Yeah. You want to look that up? I'm, I'm not at the right place. Yes, you have an abominable... Uh, um, sorry, abominable. It is abominable. <laughs> you have an ad abdominal injury. Um, okay, I've been shot in the yeah. belly. Brilliant. Yeah, uh, you've been shot in the belly. This is fatal. Um, it will kill you within one day if you're not treated appropriately. Um, yeah. Doctor? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'm now I'm now basically unconscious on the ground, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, you can be, you can choose. I'll let you choose whether or not you're conscious, uh, but you can't do anything really beyond perhaps crawl. Um, yeah, yeah. You were shot in the belly. <clears throat> okay, so I'm sucks. new to this. So, what does it mean uh, this condition? So, do you go one after the other, or you pick wh whichever you want when you're in? Yes. Either? So as you as you suffer conditions, you can pick which okay. one you want to take. Take. Um, okay. Unfortunately, in Sven's case, he didn't have a lot of picking to do. Can I roll my once. the lethality thing for that too? The one d six. I rolled one day, but I'll let you roll it. Oh, okay. Thank you. Come on, roll high, roll high. <laughs> a five. Okay. There okay. We go. All right. All right. You have five days before you die. Uh, in pain, five days fun. Yeah, that's not not a good. Uh, yeah, so uh, Sven goes down. The the woman that had been winged, uh, she stops to to grab her saber, um, and she advances up onto onto Sven. Um, she's uh, over him. Oh, the... <laughs> oh, uh, be fine. They'll be fine. Don't worry. About <laughs> right. So. So, <laughs> can I can I be conscious? Yeah, you can be unconscious. Can I Absolutely. say something to her? She's standing over me. Uh, or, yeah. Me. Okay, so you are conscious is what you want. Yeah, yeah. you can say something. Yeah. Uh, and she looks completely vacant. Like there's nothing there. Like behind the eyes. Like she's making these sounds, but there's no sort of humanity there. Okay, that's that's not what I was going to. Ad I think okay, I was planning to say something to her, and when yeah. I see that, I will just be taken aback, and the words will just die in my mouth. Oh. <laughs> because I can see that there's no appealing to any appealing to any sort of humanity. Yeah. Mm. And instead, I might just like whimper, maybe like. Mm. 
All right. Right. It's quiet enough that nobody else can hear me. That's important. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the rest of you. Um, we will go to. Um, wait, who do we have next? Tielmar. Yes. You're down uh, the road. You've heard these two shots uh, go off. Um, and a scream, I presume, considering you got shot. I don't know. Did he scream? That's up to Sven. Um, I mean, you definitely heard his screaming when the woman got shot. Uh, at this point, uh, I mean... Yeah, I'll scream, definitely. This, 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 uh, if I had the pistol, I'd do something. But this is my thinking here. If... <laughs> Uh, Yalma has no combat skills. I'm presuming that Selma is not the best fighter in the world, and I'm presuming that Amadeo is not the best fighter in the world. So the best deal we can have is to get help. So at this point, Yalma will run and try to get help from the village. Okay. Um, yeah. So yeah, go ahead and make um, yeah make an agility test. Um, you're pretty far away, so um, yeah. I kind of don't even want to make you roll for it. They, uh, you've and, left, you've left them some fresh meat to distract them. So, yeah, yeah. Don't worry about rolling for this because it <laughs> seems crazy to me. You're on a road; you can run away. Uh, you're not yeah. being chased directly. Just, um, just leave me. So, just leave me to die. That's fine. <laughs> Kalmar runs off uh, down the road toward the village. Um, Selma, you're pretty close now to this woman standing over Man. Sven. Um, so, uh, when Sven fell down, <laughs> do the yeah. musket-wielding uh, people still have a, a clear sight of him? Uh, yeah. Oh, I mean, right. he's he's down, down. I mean, it, it wouldn't be easy to shoot him now that he's on the ground, right, if that's right. what you mean. Yeah, they're not. Yeah. They're probably not going to shoot him again. A and Sven is conscious, right? Uh, that I guess if you're close enough, was... you could probably see me like looking, like turning my head to to watch her coming. <laughs> <All> right, right. <laughs> so, so Selma is not going to leave Sven to die because okay. th there's an opportunity there. Uh, hey. <laughs> he might get wealthy again. You never know. You might. Uh, so she's going to yell to Amadeo, uh, but for other reasons, she's, she's not going to leave him to die. But she's going to yell to Amadeo to try to get Sven out of there. She's basically going to yell, get Sven out of there. And then she's going to run into like a middle point between the woman and the musket wielding people and try to draw their attention some way. Okay. Uh, so yelling sort of, or taunting them in a, in a way. So it's like sort of running directly by her toward the musket is where you're running. Yeah, but like for, like in the middle and away from them to kind of like draw them and then continue to run. Okay. Yeah. With the camera on my back because With I am the camera not on your losing back, that picture. Running through the woods. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I am going to make you make an agility test because you're going to be running through the woods. Um, right. <laughs> Put the SD card under your tongue. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's a solid four. All right. <laughs> Here it goes. Uh, four D. All right. Oh, well, look at Fantastic. that. Fantastic. Wow, good job. Yeah, yeah. You make your way through the woods. You're like you're running off in a separate direction, and you can. You can see them look toward you, right? All three of them are looking toward you now as, as you run off into the woods, sort of between them. Um, Amadeo. So I'm just waiting to see if they are distracted. Yes. And be in my time to basically, because if they didn't see me or they don't realize I'm right there, I'm just going to be like hankering down, waiting to get, you know, spin out of there, kind of. That would be my plan. I don't know if I can delay or something. I guess not. Uh, yeah. Um, I don't know. If, because I'm the last one, right? On the initiative. Yeah. So it doesn't really. I'll say if you want, you can flip your initiative with theirs. And um, and yeah, you can go after they do. Do you want to do that? Yeah. All right. Let's do that. Um, awesome. OK. Um, yeah. Excellent. Uh, the. Um, Selma, <laughs> you're going to be shot at. Oh, no. Um, Am I going to be the only survivor? 
<laughs> Probably. We're going to be rolling a lot of new characters next week. You know, she has her um, camera on the back that should protect yeah, her. I mean... <laughs> on the camera. <laughs> no, no. I am protecting the camera with my body. It's oh, right. Right. Oh, That's what I was thinking. Okay, man. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, man. Oh, no. This is brutal. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> so, um, here's what I'll say. Um, Salma, uh, you can take um, two conditions, two physical conditions. You can choose which, and you drop your camera. Or you can take three physical conditions and keep your camera. Uh, the physical conditions uh, subtract dice from my rolls, right? Yeah, just take yes. them on your character sheet, and it'll automatically apply to your All right. attribute. I am taking the three conditions. Okay. <laughs> um, a man right, of his comes, word. Here comes the second shot. Oh, God. Oh. This one will Okay. Miss. By a miracle. <laughs> as, like, you're hurt, right? You, you've, you've been hit. Like, not critically, but you've been hit. And you hear the second shot, and there's a split second where you're just waiting for nothing, right? To embrace the great blackness. Um, and you hear, you hear the right by your ear um, as this musket ball uh, goes right by you. Um, and the one with the saber is whoop, whoop, whoop. She runs past uh, Sven and is trying to chase you down, um, Selma. You rolled uh, one on your um, agility test. Um, I'm going to make this um, an oppose to see if she sort of catches up. Um, Okay, I she she's trying to keep up with you, but you're keeping your distance for now, uh, despite everything. Um, <laughs> now, Amadeo, Sven is down. Has uh, no wild people uh, standing over him. So I just do a quick diagnostic as fast as I can, and if I can do a quick patch, I'll do it. If not, I will just grab him somehow and carry him back to the village. For sure. Better. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, I don't know how to do that. Yeah, uh, so you can go over and uh, you can make a medicine test. Um, and medicine. I think, yeah, this is a, a good uh, time to use your um, to use advantage. Your advantage, perhaps. Yeah. Ah, good point. <laughs> it is only once per mystery, but totally worth it. It's, I'm yeah, glad it I used mine. Like the only one shot I could take as well. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that means uh, I have, uh, okay, precision would be four, medicine would be two. Plus two, that would be eight dice. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, okay. Two successes. You have two successes, so that will mean that um, not only do you, uh, you you can sort of get Sven back, but he can sort of recover one of mm -hmm. his conditions. Um, um, and I, I forgot I have my doctor's back, which would be two extra dice actually. Oh wow! Doesn't doesn't uh, one of the six, does one of the successes um, stabilize my critical injury? Uh, so so uh, so this won't be that. This will be okay. a different role to actually treat the critical injury. Like this is yeah. He's just trying to patch you up to get you up and sort right, of okay. moving. Basically, okay. should I roll these two extra? That they yeah, put? go for it. Go for it. Roll those two extra dice. Okay. Um, nothing, but yeah. I so forgot. where you are right now is that. Sven can recover the broken condition and get one of its other conditions back. Um, if you push the roll and get more successes, you could actually get him back with more of his uh, conditions. I'll leave it for later. We are, I think we need to get out of here as fast as we can. <laughs> okay, yeah. excellent. If I need, I will just help him with my shoulder. I will carry him kind of yeah. back to the village. That makes a lot of sense. Um, okay. I'm not dead yet. <laughs> Not dead yet. <laughs> exactly. Uh, all right. Um, Thanks, so Ben Horn. Let's uh, yep. let's do this um, now. Uh, well, yeah. So, um, Jalmar's gone. Selma, you need to escape. <laughs> You're being chased. Uh, which means you need to uh, beat this other lady in an agility test. Uh, she's also wounded, so that's good. Um, 
So uh, what's your agility dice pool right now? Zero. Is, it, is it zero, zero? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you always roll one. Um, All right. I, uh... well, what do you mean? You roll your physique plus one die or only one die? Uh, so his, uh, so I think uh, should be rolling physique plus uh, agility skill. And if it's nothing, then she's just rolling one die. For, for a skill. So that would be four dice. Well, no, no. She's it's ah. it, her her physique is normally three, and she has no agility, but she has she has all three of her conditions ticked, which makes her her dice pool zero for agility or for physique, ah, and she's got, got it, no points got in, in agility, so she her dice pool got is it. zero at the moment. But you're always me. allowed yeah, to roll this roll one die. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Got it. Clear. All right. I got, so this, I got 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 this. Damn it. <laughs> I don't got this. Uh, yeah, uh, mm. in, you can, um, yeah. I guess <laughs> push it to could, faint. <laughs> I you guess push you it could to try and push it. You would yeah. be broken. Um, it means you might be able to escape, but you would be broken. Uh, uh Wait, what does it mean? Might be able to escape, but broken. How does that... right? So if you break yourself whilst making a test, you still do that thing that you're doing. In this case, it's fleeing. Um, right. And you've been, you've actually been shot, right? So maybe you just push yourself too far and you collapse after after they've gotten away. Like when yeah. the adrenaline when the adrenaline dies off, you just collapse unconscious. I would yeah. I would say this how. It, interpret that yeah. all right but you've got so, no six you've got no guarantee of success <laughs> <laughs> yeah you need to roll a six <laughs> on one dice so your call well, uh i'm all in all let's right go. let's see it <laughs> see, the yeah. high drama moment if you here. click the blue the blue circle it'll push the roll oh. No! nope oh, all shit. right well um <laughs> So you, uh, no. you collapse. Uh, you're being chased. You collapse. Um, your your last uh, condition is there. Um, and then we... Uh, who are we at now? This was Selma. Um, uh, and then I guess it's them. Mm -hmm. uh, right. So this woman with the saber, she runs up to you, Selma. Uh, she grabs you by the collar, um, as I imagine everyone else is doing their, their best to escape. Uh, and she starts dragging you off through the woods. Um, and the other two are sort of getting up. And I think at that point, we're going to end this session. Because we're right. just about at our time limit. <laughs> um, Hunger. So, okay. that went wildly off of what I was expecting, um, but we got to demonstrate a whole lot of system stuff, so that's great. Um, so just to make it clear as well, um, when I got broken, I rolled a critical injury because I got shot. Um, Selma didn't have to roll a critical injury because right. she pushed the roll herself, and you never take a critical injury when you do that. If you get broken from uh, pushing yourself, so just to make that really clear, for people wondering. Mm -hmm. That was cool. I mean, I thought you said this wasn't going to be too horrific. Um, it kind of same seems a little bit like a horror film. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's it's going to get. I think it's probably going to get more like a horror film next time. Um, yeah, really surprised seems like to it. me, which is wonderful. <laughs> uh, well, we haven't got any. Yeah. Nobody's dead yet, so you know anything nobody's can happen. Dead. Anything can happen. We have one lethal injury, but no one's actually yeah. dead. So, I've got a permanent yeah. injury tied to that too, which is also kind of cool. Is a defect? Yep. Yep. Uh, that might not be permanent, but we'll handle that when we have to. Yep. So I cure the abdominal injury. No, so that's going to be a separate role at a different time. Mm -hmm. You're, okay. You were literally just trying to get him up and moving. Um, You've kind of stabilized me a little bit, if that makes yeah. sense, and yeah. give me a quick patch up. But I, I need proper medical medical care to get the um, to deal with the critical injury. Mm. And because it was no, a 42 and not like a 56 or something, the, lethal the lethality is in days and not in hours or even rounds. 
it can be a lot worse. Yeah. Yeah. I love this image of the strange people with their antlers. Or bloody. I I did want to ask you one thing. You kind that's, of you've kind that's of very cool. you've kind of that's hinted cool. at it, but like other than the antlers on their like you, they're wearing a headdress of antlers. Their feet are yeah. bloody. They're naked. They're pale, but other yeah. like other than that, they just look human, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that's scary. That's and cool. even like what about height height and stuff like that? They're not particularly small, or are they average, or they they look pretty average. I mean they. Okay. I mean uh, what I will say is they look pretty fit um they're kind of lean and and sort of rugged looking like they they're not strangers to physical activity maybe like they're living naked in the woods (laughs) (laughs) right yeah 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 Uh, in fact they're they're even leaner than than perhaps uh yeah okay (laughs) just reading the chat magnus is saying horror film this is what sweden is like all the time (laughs) i have i have watched the ritual and midsummer recently and uh yeah that's what that's what it seems like (laughs) <laughs> just wait until we set something in finland i mean <laughs> i've watched sauna as well so I yeah i was gonna happened. say i, I was gonna that. say sauna sauna is, is it's what i was thinking that's oh, even that's God. probably that's probably even more horrific but yeah yeah okay oh yeah sauna is great if you can get your hands on it um my okay. copy of it then watch it it's it's really good highly recommended Right, Eric, uh, but thank yeah, you yeah, much. Magnus, yeah. this is uh, this is my own like custom mystery that I wrote for this uh, because it wouldn't feel right to do a published one before mm. people can even buy it. Um, so yeah, this is uh, going to be all original. Very yeah. cool. Cool. All right. All right. Well, thanks. So thanks everyone. This was uh, this is a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, thanks to you very unexpected yeah. i apologize you probably <laughs> prepped a whole bunch of stuff for the village and we didn't take we didn't go through the woods we didn't go through the woods this is what happens well, over you don't know what was going to happen through the woods maybe no, it was something know. more yeah. horrific yeah. was going to yeah. happen exactly i mean no. my my original thought was that i was gonna let sven go alone and we would go through the forest and get into the village and like we could hear like a <laughs> somewhere uh-huh. yeah that would have been it <laughs> that, that would have been the end of sven <laughs> So, would you reckon that this game is very deadly too? Oh god, I, mean, yeah. I don't oh, know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. From reading the book, I mean, compared with other mutant year zero. This is your first time I mean, playing a year zero game, right, Tony? Yeah, exactly. This, yeah, unlike BRP, um, BRP tends to have um, some sort of health pool, and then the games like Warhammer sometimes they have fate points or something like that. Um, most of almost all the year zero games are deadlier because you can get a critical very quickly even after one one hit often um and the criticals yep. if you roll it like if you roll a 66 on a critical it's an instant death you can't re-roll it unless um, some of the games have a talent where you can flip the dice yep. um, but even then if you roll so a 66 you can't flip a six and a six it's like yep. an instant death no matter what yeah. so yeah. it's wow. pretty it's pretty bloody deadly um yeah. which is why and i like es- it so much es- yeah especially in, in this game since like if you're getting shot with most anything in this game it's gonna do two damage uh at the very minimum uh well, so yeah. i think not yeah, if you're being I mean, not if you're being shot with a with a, a um an aristocrat's bow the... <laughs> that's gonna do one damage yeah yeah, yeah. because it's... the only way that boston is slightly less deadly than a game like forbidden lands is there are no instant death criticals oh right mm-hmm. i've looked at the critical uh, but chart. there are ones that would okay. kill you in rounds so yeah i'm okay. pretty close Okay. Yeah. Cool. Rolled the pierced skull recently. That was fun. Oh yeah. Oof. In in, in Forbidden Lands. Oof. Yeah. So yeah, the a sixty six I... on the physical critical injury table in 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 Vazen is a crushed chest, and you it's lethal in one d six rounds. So if you roll a right. one on that, then you're dead in a round, right? Yeah. That's that. Um, yeah. Yeah. You and the below that you've got your you get punctured lungs, which is also pretty severe. Also one d six rounds. So there are two there are two results on that which would result in you being dead fairly quickly, um, yeah. and there would need to be a medicine roll specifically to address that critical to stabilize right. you. So you could you might still be broken after that. Um, yeah. So even though yeah, that's after not, this, we're gonna have yeah. a lot of opportunity to play with the medical table. The yeah. Medical <laughs> <condition. So> <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. This is great for diagnostic and, and learning. Yeah. So, yeah. And I'm happy I, I got the surgeon then. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna have a lot of job, a lot of work to do actually. Yeah. 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 Job security. <laughs> so I think we treat this. We don't treat this as a full session, right? We're, we're gonna finish this mystery. So in terms of like XP, just because um people might be asking about this. 
Um, yeah. We went. I think generally you with these games, if like two hours isn't necessarily enough time, especially with the intro right. at the start. We should probably tack think... this tack this on to the next one as like our first full session. I would suggest. Yeah. Yeah, I think that um, XP is for mystery, but I'll have to double check. Yeah, that. I would make sense. Um, yeah, and it kind of makes yeah. it kind of, in my head. It kind of seems like we're going to be taking probably at least two sessions to get through a single mystery. Um, Sounds like it, which is fine. But yeah, cool. Oh, this is I mean this is session based. Um, All right. Okay. Yeah, but well. yeah. Uh, so so far, <laughs> I would say that. Um, I mean, everyone gets one XP because you all participated. Um, and um, I would definitely say that Selma gets another one for taking a risk to protect other people. Whoop. Um, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. What about me? I was protecting the whole. I stepped forward. I you stepped did forward. step forward. Yep. I will. I will. Yeah, definitely. So Sven can get one of those as well. I'll take what um, I can get before I die. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Um, have you learned anything? I don't think no, I don't any think of so. you have learned anything particularly deep yet. Uh, you well, I learned anything. to follow the rule. Like, if it's worth... <laughs> <laughs> wait to the letter. Listen, listen to <laughs> the locals. Learn. Listen right. to the locals. <laughs> listen to um, the locals. <laughs> so, yeah, that's where we are right now. Um, it, it's kind of a spoiler because you know now that you have not confronted any Vasa, not, not directly. No. Um, but you would have had to make a fear roll if you had, so yeah. So what do we do with the, the XP? Can we do something or uh, not yet? You'll need five or ten for an advance. Okay. So five you're... at the minimum. So what we're saying is we are getting XP for for this session then. Yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, okay. I'll definitely right. give you it for this. Yeah. Um, if you, uh, XP that, is on the character sheets under under the advantages section, kind of near the bottom right, everyone. Yeah, ah, you okay, need five okay. XP for an advance. Yeah. Okay. For anything like attributes, yeah. skills. The, uh, so only um, skills can be developed, and you can buy new talents. Yeah. Okay. Okay. From your own archetype or any? Uh, from any. Um, archetype only matters for your original talent. Um, after that, you can buy from anyone. By general, you can buy from other professions, from other archetypes. Sorry. Okay. That's cool. That's cool. Um, yeah, I think the talents usually want to want to make sense. Of it, have it make sense in the narrative, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we want to sort of fit with the narrative, but within reason. Mm. Yeah. Cool. Makes sense. Yeah. All right. Cool. Any questions from anyone in the chat? Um, now's your chance. Yeah. Um, otherwise, I'll do the quick closing blurb. Um, we're going to be playing this, as I said, once a month. Um, it's not once every four weeks. We're, we're basically just trying to play in every calendar month one of each game. Um, and we're going to try and space them out so that they... Ideally, we're going to do every two weeks, um, we're going to have a game. Um, however, next week is going to be Forbidden Lands, the, our third session of that. Um, so not quite two weeks away. And um, yeah... So it's going to be at the same time as this one right now, Sunday at um, 8 p.m. UK time. If uh, you want to get alerted to it going live, then um, head over to our Twitch channel if you're watching this on YouTube in um, in the future. And uh, click on the, the purple follow button, and that will um, make you follow the channel. And when we go live, you'll get a little email alert um, to let you know. Um, yeah, just in the chat, um, um, Steph, Steph is here. Um, he's the designer. He's the guy who's made the, the dice bot. Yeah, um, it's wonderful. It's working great, Steph. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, no problems with it. <laughs> um, I like, I like this compared to Forbidden Lands. In Forbidden Lands, we have to do, um, we have to say how many of each dice we have to type out. So it's like, yeah. you know, three B, two S, two G for like the base skill and gear dice, and it just takes a little bit extra time to type it all in. Whereas this is, this is a little bit smoother. Um, so yeah, um, yeah, it's it's a nice. Uh... A nice change yeah <laughs> I, I think i would have an easier time getting into uh year zero if it was just just the one dice pool that's always been the thing that kind of puts me mm -hmm. off like well there's what like think... six games now and only two of them have a have the the mixed dice pool so most of them don't tales from the loop oh. coriolis alien and vazen all have a single dice pool yeah. mm -hmm. um although saying that um alien is a little bit different because it has two but the second like this dice spot actually 
automatically calculates your stress pool as well a little bit. I oh, know you have to now you have to type it in. Yeah. Anyway, it's only two. It's a little bit easier to handle. Um, but yeah. Coriolis is my favorite Year Zero game, and it's it's got a single. One of the things I really like about it is that it's a single dice pool. Um, yeah, I, I definitely Coriolis prefer right now. Those. What's that? I'm having so much fun. I'm reading Coriolis right now. I'm just loving it. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. Cool. It's, Although it's we're not we're not here to um, gush about no. Coriolis. <laughs> yes. This is an amazing game. We're stuck in the 18th yes. century, um, sorry, 19th century, 19th. pseudo 19th century um, Scandinavia, Sweden. Um, oh. And that's where we shall remain. <laughs> so well, thanks um, everyone for watching. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. You catch the rest of this uh, wonderful thing and see if we kill any of these people. <laughs> <laughs> it looks increasingly likely. Um, yeah. Piece by piece. Take your yes. time. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't set out. I did, this was not. There were you clear knew, directions. You knew Matt would take the bait. You knew it from the beginning. <laughs> There was no village. There I don't take there. responsibility. For that. <laughs> there was there was no village prep. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I, I can see that. <sighs> also, I like that. I like that little thing Eric said. That yeah, if 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 you do fighting in this, and if someone starts shooting at you, you you've really failed. <laughs> he said a little while ago. Yeah. <laughs> I was... Oh yeah, great. Things have gone badly. Yeah. I think where uh, I think where I went wrong was I didn't actually try and use a skill to cow them initially. I just tried to talk them down. Whereas I could have tried some sort of manipulation role, or I could have used a magic trick or something stupid like that to try and like, dazzle or confuse them. But instead, maybe. I just I was just too too kind of <laughs> too cocky. So yeah, but that fits. I mean, this well. this is all. If I survive, then um, Sven survives, and this is going to help build his um, his story a little bit, his character. Mm -hmm. And Selma's, yeah. I think it's fair to say Selma's not going to survive, so. I mean, the next time you see Selma, she'll be going, whoop. Whoop. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> cool. All right. Selma's last words as she was carried off was the camera. Camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, the camera will be probably lying on the ground, wouldn't My... it? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. My perfect photograph. <laughs> That's all I care about. I want to. I want to leave a legacy behind. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Cool. Should go on. Yeah. Should we settle uh, relationships, or should we just do that uh, via text, or maybe? Uh... I mean, uh, both of you are dead, so who cares? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, maybe we'll, we'll talk about it in text between sessions. Yeah, I think yeah. we wanted to sounds, develop sounds this organically, right? A little bit. Yeah. So. Yeah. Very cool. 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 All right. Thank Thanks, everyone, again, and uh, catch yeah. you next time. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Bye-bye.